Today's video is going to be a wee bit longer than usual. I'm going to show you how to tie an alternative version of the celebrated Miyawaki beach popper designed by Leyland Miyawaki to imitate a crippled bait fish fleeing along the water surface. And this is a pattern that's pretty much unbeatable in getting the attention of coastal cutthroat on our saltwater beaches, but it does suffer the drawback of being really difficult to get hookups. As it's usually tied, the front end is built on a hook shank and the business end has a stinger hook held in place with a loop of thick monofilament. So the connection is pretty flexible. And this is an example from my fly box that's seen its share of action. And you'll see that a fish that's aggressively grabbing this fly is likely to just deflect that hook and not be impaled on it. So what I'm doing now is tying the beach popper on a tube which permits a much more rigid hook attachment. The hook isn't as easily deflected from the long axis of the fly and that results in a higher proportion of hookups. And I'll show you what I mean with some footage I shot on my local beach. What you'll see here is three consecutive strikes on the conventional beach bobber. So I felt the weight of this fish but I've not hooked it. I'm 0 for 1 on the day. There aren't many fish around so this is frustrating. Now a little while later you'll see another fish clearly grabs the fly but it isn't hooked and I'm over two. Now the final hit of the morning. Again, this is a fish that has my popper in its mouth. But it just isn't hooked. There, and I'm over three. So two days later, I'm back at the same beach with the tube popper this time, and it's high tide, so I'm. I'm casting parallel to the shore, which is a, a good strategy, generally speaking. And here's a fish that's going to strike not once, but twice. And I didn't hook it, but I never felt that particular fish. An hour later and the tide's falling, so I'm casting a bit further out. Just retrieving fast enough to make a wake. this one I've hooked and I'll, I'll go on to land that one. So I'm one for two. And a little bit later in the morning, tide's still going out. And a confident take and fish on. Now I'm going to show you this fish being landed, which is to make a further point about the tube popper, and that is that the hook invariably detaches from the tube while you're playing the fish, and that means that you don't have the leverage of that whole fly work, working against you, and all you have is the hook in the fish's jaw. There you see the, pe the uh, poppers in the net. And now again, as I'm getting to release the fish, you'll see that the poppers just slid all the way down the leader. And that was a nice fish. Now obviously that's not a strictly scientific comparison, uh, but for me, the Miyawaki popper tied on a tube is hands down the way to go. Another advantage is that the tube popper is much more buoyant. You're losing half a hook, which obviously tends to sink, and replacing it with a tube that floats. My poppers stay on the surface along their entire length. So to tie this, you're going to need a tube adapter for your vise. I got one from Jay Stockard, which cost me less than seven bucks for the entire kit. I think that's a pretty great deal. I'm using HMH poly tubes in the small size, which have an external diameter of three thirty seconds of an inch. I've cut my tube with a razor blade to 44 millimeters. Now I've worked out all the dimensions for these flies so that you don't have to. First thing I'll do is melt one end to create a little flare that the hook connector tubing is going to slide over. So I'm going to slip my tube over the mandrel that comes with the kit and then place that in the adapter. Now 
Now to prevent that tube from rotating, I'm going to push the tip down firmly against my bench while I tighten the locking screw. Then I'll place the assembly back in my vise. Before attaching my thread, I'm going to take my popper head and mark on the tube approximately how far it extends back. And I'll know that I can put thread wraps beyond that point, but I'll want to keep all the materials themselves behind it. I'm using a 6 aught uni thread in white. I'll make a short thread base, say about a quarter of an inch in front of the point I just marked. like so, and cut away the excess. Now, I've already prepared two matching grizzly feathers from a rooster cape, trimmed so that there's two inches of feather. How wide you want these is up to you, but I prefer pretty skinny hackles. I'm going to tie one of these in along my side, pointing it slightly downward. That's about right. Now I'll rotate the vise and tie in the other feather in exactly the same way, keeping them aligned. And obviously you want to have the shiny side of these feathers to face outward. Those look pretty good. Now I'll just trim away the excess stems. The next material to add is some holographic silver flashaboo. I'm taking two strands which I'm going to tie in so that they uh, they fall kind of alongside the tube in the in the manner of a, a lateral line. Like so. Trim that away. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to trim those at the back so that they extend just a little bit longer than the grizzly feathers and you can make them slightly different lengths. And then I'm going to remove the excess at the tie-in point. Next I'm going to add a few strands of crystal flash. This is the multicolored variety where the color varies along the length of a single strand. I'm going to wrap two pieces of that around my tying thread and then bring it up around to the top of the tube before tying it down. And I'll trim that to the length of the flashaboo. For the wing of the fly I'm going to use white Icelandic sheep wool. This has a wonderful natural taper and it creates a lot of movement. Bear in mind that it slicks down a lot when it's wet so you need to add quite a lot of it. Having said that I probably make my flies with a slimmer profile than other folks. Uh, you just need to experiment a bit to dress these flies the way you like. I've lashed the hair down right along the top of the tube and I'm just going to trim away the excess at a shallow angle. And on top of that, I'm going to add a slightly smaller amount of olive green Icelandic sheep. And moistening this stuff slightly uh, is going to help you gauge the taper. Again, I'm just going to tie this right in 
on top of the white. And if it all starts to look a bit messy and bulky, don't worry because you'll just be covering this up. I'll cut that away. Just make sure it's all tied securely down. There we are. Now finally, I'm going to add a topping of three peacock curls. I'm going to measure the length so that they come up again to the tip of the wing. And then tie them in at the butt ends. There we go. I'll snip that away and I'll do a bit of tidying up. Now I'll make a whip finish. And you'll see that my tube is just beginning to spin on the mandrel. If that happens, you need to just take it out of the vise and retighten it. But since I'm almost done, there's not really a problem. Snip away my thread. And at this point, I'm going to remove the fly from the tube adapter. So for the popper head, you can use a Rainey's Peewee Pop, but I find that you know they're usually out of stock in the in the white color so I make my own out of this three quarter three eighths inch foam cylinder from Wapsi or River Road and this is how to do it I'm going to put a coat of super glue over the threads at the front of the fly. Now I'll take my popper head, which I've pre fitted by widening out the hole with a hot needle, and I'll push it on. And, and it should be a tight fit. Now notice that I put the long side of the foam head at the bottom edge where the grizzly feathers are. Now I'll take my lighter and just carefully melt the, uh, the exposed front of the tube just a little bit so that it forms a, a small flange. And this is where you're going to thread your tippet through the tube. Now 
Now the HMH polytubes come with some flexible junction tubing and you need to cut off about half an inch of that. And then you just stretch it over the tube at the back of the fly, leaving about half of it proud to take the hook shank. That's it. And the best hook to use is the Gamakatsu Octopus in size 4 or, or 6. And you can get these in several different finishes. I'm going to use the nickel silver one. Now of course you tie your tippet onto the hook first. I'm just putting this together for demonstration purposes. You need the point of that hook to be facing up. Uh, that is pointing towards the top of the wing where the um, where the peacock curl is. And that's the finished fly. So you, you need to have some of these in your fly box. There's no doubt that they're very effective and a lot of fun to fish with. So wishing you very good luck and thanks for watching my videos.